Hi, everybody. Today, we are going to talk chicken. So we're going to roast a chicken today. You know, I always have to get fancy, right? Always. So I think that four pounds is kind of the, the max size chicken that I like to do. And trust me, anytime I go to the store and I buy a bigger chicken, I get in trouble. So. So Under actually, four pounds. This is called a Poulet Rouge Fermier. This is where a, do you get that? This comes from uh, Joyce Farms. Um, they come frozen, and so uh, this one's defrosted. And what's special about these chickens is they have a very, very thin skin, not a lot of fat under their skin. Um, the skin gets much crispier with them, and I, for one, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a huge fan of chicken skin. Yeah, same. You used to not be. I know, but, but now you know, I like the now way you make it. you love it. So Joyce Farms actually delivers these to us. You can order them online, and... Um, and they'll send them to your house, which is great for right now, since so going to the store is not that much fun. But I think if you want to really up your chicken game, there's some things you can do to make it extra special. And, and they're extra really- Extra special chicken. They are really worth the time. Uh, brining our chicken is gonna add, uh, it's gonna add some uh, moisture to it. It's gonna add some salt to it. It's gonna infuse the meat with salt and flavor. It's gonna improve the texture of the chicken, but it takes more time. I think people are used to brining turkey because if you just take a turkey out of the package and roast it, it's, uh, it's pretty shitty. <laughs> if you don't do it, give your turkey extra love, you can't even eat it. But if you give chicken extra love, it's even better. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a brine. So I'm gonna have you get, uh, do one quart. Okay, one quart. One quart is uh, barely enough to cover this chicken, but the chicken needs to be completely covered. So this is a quart of water, also four cups. I know that we've said in the past that we don't use recipes or formulas, but this is an example where you need to measure it. So when you're making a brine for chicken, if you make a one gallon brine, you want one cup of salt in one gallon. So one quart is a quarter gallon, so how much salt do you want in one quart? If you wanted one? A quarter cup. A quarter cup. Ah, oh, nailed it! Where's really bad at math here? and he loves to make fun of me. So that was a pretty easy one though. Quarter cup of salt in there. So if we were gonna do two quarts, you would use half a cup of salt. Then I'm gonna have you put a, a tablespoon of sugar in there. Or sometimes I use honey. Sometimes you use agave nectar. Just something to give it a little sweetness. Peppercorns. Peppercorns. I'm just gonna put a few in there. That's not that important to measure. We have a little bit of thyme. I'm gonna throw some thyme in there. Let's get a little garlic here, maybe. And do you have to peel the garlic? I don't bother to peel them. Maybe chop those in half. Okay. Jesus. I have here a Meyer lemon. We could use an orange. We could use a lime. We could use a lemon. This here is fennel. We're gonna use this uh, later when we roast our chicken, but I'm not gonna use the ends when I roast the chicken, so I'm just gonna use the ends, and I'm gonna just put a little bit of fennel in there. I wanna add other aromatics. We have a bay leaf here. Let's throw one of those in there. We're gonna, we're just gonna get that to a boil. I'm gonna use this bag and put the chicken in it. It'll, it'll all help me conserve the brine a little better. Basically not use as much. Yeah, I never know what, I'm, I'm really bad at cooking proteins. Like it's not my thing, so. I, I like learning about this because I, I get like freaked out that I'm gonna like ruin the chicken or I'm overcook it or I just so don't know what I'm doing. The beautiful chicken. chicken. I'm gonna have you throw okay. that away and then wash your hands. Blah. Okay. I hate raw meat. I am gonna take. Uh, I like to fold the leg, the wing legs under. And we're gonna drop that in there. So we got this ready to go. It just needs to boil. Just it, the only reason it needs to boil, it really just simmer, is the, the salt needs to dissolve in the liquid. Okay. So simmer and stir, and that's it. Chicken. So our brine is done. It's cool. We're going to bring our chicken over here. So this is the salt, a little bit of sugar, and all the spices. So there are, our chicken is covered in the brine. Just stick it in a little bowl just in case it spills. We're gonna put it in the fridge uh, for about 12 to 18 hours. Here is another chicken uh, that we have uh, brined. And how long, so you leave it, sorry, you leave it in the brine just 12 hours? 12 hours, 18 hours. No more than that. No more than that. Okay. I wouldn't leave it longer than that. This chicken, a after we've brined it, I actually put it on a rack in a kind of quiet part of the refrigerator. Do we have a quiet part of the refrigerator? I mean, yes, because I made him get the pro refrigerator so that we have our own drawer for raw meat because it grosses me out and I just have it near my vegetables. I have a drawer down here. So now I know some people will be freaked out by that, 
Um, but when you, when you brined it, you've added a lot of salt to it, and salt is how uh, people used to preserve food. So it actually preserves it. So this is not going to rot if you brine it. I will actually air dry the chicken for two, three, four, sometimes even five days. If I do this with a duck, I'll try a duck for up to 10 or 12 days. So gross. But it's so good. It intensifies the flavor. And I, I promise And the salt it, preserves it. So it, it, it makes does. it not and get bacteria. I, I promise it won't rot. But if you're, if you're afraid, um, you can take it right out of the brine and roast it. Or maybe give it a try and dry it one night first mm -hmm. and roast it, and it's going to get better. The longer you're willing to air dry it, the better it's going to be. Why is that? It just intensifies the flavor, and it gets crisper oh, okay. because um, it, it dries it. And where do you get this string? Uh, William Sonoma. So this chicken we took out of the refrigerator uh, about an hour ago. Right. Yeah, you want to let it kind of come to room temperature. We're going to add a little bit more salt to it. And we're gonna put a little bit of salt on the inside. And, uh, and it still has like some peppercorns and stuff in there from the yeah, brine. Yeah, from the brine, yeah. We're gonna take some thyme and we're gonna add some thyme to the cavity. We can add garlic if we want. And it's nice because you shove it all in there. You don't have to yeah. Cut it. So then uh, this part of the chicken here, I'll do this. This is called the, the Pope's hat. Oh, really? And I guess it looks like a Pope's hat. And I actually. Never knew you could eat this, but this is like the most delicious thing to eat at the end of the chicken. And that's what the chef gets to eat is you cut this off and you eat it in one bite. I'll at let the you end. Eat don't, it. don't ever serve it to anybody. Just eat it. It's amazing. So there's a lot of different ways to truss a chicken, but I think it's important Trust. to truss a chicken. So we're tying a knot around the Pope's hat and then we're wrapping around the legs there. Pull that there. Then we're going to come around the bottom part of the breast. You saw how I, I, did the wings before on the other one. So we're just gonna tie this here and tie it in a knot. So there we have our trussed chicken. So it just makes it all compact. It's gonna make it cook more evenly. We're gonna roast this in the oven. We wanna add some more aromatics to this. So I'm gonna chop some carrots. We're gonna use about half this fennel ball. This will be with the next chicken. <laughs> so we're gonna put that in there. Can you add a little olive oil to that? Sure. I actually knew where something was. Let's add a little bit of salt to that. Too much? And we're gonna mix that up. We're gonna put that in the bottom of this pan here. And this stuff gets really good because all the chicken juice gets on there. So you can set the chicken right on there. You can use the chicken on the rack. Every time you handle the chicken, you wash your hands. I'm gonna add a couple of slices of this butter and I'm just gonna stick it on here. It's gonna kind of melt and coat the chicken and run over it. So that's it. This chicken is ready to roast. Maybe a tiny bit more salt. Okay, so what measure. do we put? What temperature do we put for the chicken? So the we oven? have our oven preheated to 400 degrees. This is a Gaginau oven. They're very accurate temperatures. They have great convection. 46, 47 minutes. Most people, um, they should probably the first time they try this with a four pound chicken should cook it for 55 minutes and, and bring it out and see what it's like. When you brine it, there's more. Um, there's more leeway from it drying out too. How do, you, how do you know, like for me, the person who doesn't know how to cook a chicken very well, how, how do you know when it's done? You wiggle, wiggle the leg, it should be loose and it shouldn't be so stiff. It should mm -hmm. be flexibility in the joint. Pierce you a chicken. Like yoga with it. You can pierce a chicken and it should run clear. So, um, what if I want a medium rare? <laughs> you don't want a medium rare chicken gray. Too okay. long. Nobody's gonna watch a video okay. for this long. Okay. Like I would. Okay. I just need to know how to roast a chicken. You know what I mean? While we're cooking, so we have here, we, we're going to do some mashed potatoes for our presentation. And I think we did a mashed potato segment, uh, so you will get to see how to do that. Our sauce here that's been reduced. Yeah. And our chicken here is still roasting. It says it's got 16 minutes to go. It's starting to get a nice golden color. It's going to get darker and darker. We don't have to baste that or anything, so it's great. There's our beautiful roast chicken. That's going to be hot. I always like to, when I have a hot pan, I like to keep a, a, like a towel on the end of it so I don't inadvertently pick it up and do something stupid. I'm going to cut a little string here that's holding it together. See, and our, our joints move real easily. So we're going to let that sit for a minute. Yeah. What? I think your hands are sensitive. Well, 
well, ideally five minutes or so. So we have a leg and a thigh there. We made a little bit of mashed potato here. Which we'll show you how to make in our next video. On this plate, we'll just put a little pile of mashed potato. Put the chicken here. And you can eat these. I like to eat the vegetables under there, but he uses them for a stock. We'll take one of the breasts off. Three different plating styles with yeah. all the same food. Like that. Am I allowed to, where do you want it? Well, put it wherever you think it would be pretty. Perfect. You didn't like that? Not that much, but it's good. It dripped a little bit right there. Take she just wants to eat it. I oh, know. Get it over with. And this one, I think I'm gonna sauce it. Mm. And this one. Pretty. So there you have it, guys. Roast chicken with, what, how do you say that sauce? Like, what kind of sauce is that? Just chicken sauce, roast chicken, and a gastric. It's good. With air there. Try it. Yay. It's delicious. Hope you guys enjoy. Now, the last part is, and I think it's the most important part when you roast the chicken, is there is so much goodness left in this. There's still pieces that we're gonna eat off of here. Can't wait. But even after you eat all of the meat, there's so much goodness on here. To make this rich um, sauce that has this consistency like this, you need homemade chicken stock. So we're gonna do a segment on how to do homemade chicken stock. Now you saw those vegetables that we put at the bottom of the pan when we roasted and you're like, well, what are those for? You could absolutely eat those. You could put those on this plate and they'd be magnificent. They're so caramelized they're and good, so good, but they're absolutely great to add depth and flavor to your stock, which in turn adds flavor to your sauce. So we're gonna turn this into our chicken stock. Thank you guys, try it.